Hello, my friends from increasingly frigid Northeast Wisconsin. This is Kurt Berglund with Game 2 of the Fall Classic Baseball 1961 All-Star Series. That's right, a series between all of the players in the two, from the two All-Star Games um, held in 19... 61 the first one at candlestick park the famous one where Stu miller was blown off the mound f from high winds the second one boston's fenway park paul richards was the manager for the american league uh in these two contests and denny murtaugh was the manager for the national league we are up to game two in that series. I'm going to bookmark all of my fall classic baseball games on my channel so you can find them here. Playlist them, sorry. I'm going to playlist them for you. So if you're looking for fall classic on my channel, you'll be seeing more of it over the next few months. Uh, for the first game, I'm not going to spoil it. It's a great game, phenomenal game, one run game. I'll leave it at that if you want to check it out on my channel. Still there. Uh, this game, uh, for that game, I stole the batting orders from the first All-Star game in 1961. And for this one, I'm stealing the batting orders from the second one. The teams are merged. So everybody that made either the first All-Star game or the second All-Star game they're all thrown together in this one. Uh, the opposing pitchers in this game, the American League will be the home team. Uh, the opposing pitchers are Bob Perkey of the Cincinnati Reds. He was a right-hander. And he went 16-12 and 12 for the pennant-winning Reds in 1961. He will be opposed by... Right-hander Jim Bunning of the 61 Tigers. He went 17 and 11. Uh, we're using uh, Fall Classic Baseball, wonderful Greg game, Greg Sovan game, if you haven't checked it out. I'll be putting the link for Fall Classic in the description for the video in case you want to go see what the game looks like. Uh, amazing game. Uh, my only regret is I took so long to take a look at it. Um, so, let's get to the starting lineups and check out the whether the pitchers have their stuff today. Let's do that right now. Leading off for the National League, the visiting National League, in game number two will be Mari, is Mari Wills. Remember, these are as-played lineups, so... The reason we're using as played lineups, of course, is because if we don't, heads explode all over this great land of ours. So, Mari Wills leads off at shortstop. Hank Aaron bats second in right field. Eddie Matthews bats third at third base. William Mays bats fourth in center field. Orlando Cepeda bats fifth in left field. Bill White bats sixth at first base. Frank Bowling bats seventh at second base. And John Roseboro bats eighth behind the plate. On the mound is Bob Perkey. For the homestanding American League, leading off at first base, Norm Cash. Batting second in left field, Rocky Calavito. Batting third in right field, Al Kaline. Batting fourth in center field, Mickey Mantle. Batting fifth behind the plate, John Romano. Batting sixth at shortstop, Louis Aparicio. Batting seventh at second base, Johnny Temple. And batting eighth at third base, Brooks Robinson. These, This is Paul Richards' lineup. Batting ninth, Jim Bunning. All right, let's take a look at your starting pitchers. Gonna roll and see how effective they'll be for Fall Classic. A stuff is they're really on their game. They're A stuff. B is average stuff. And C is they're gonna be off, or they could be off their game, depending upon how it goes. So great, average, and not so great. 
Perky gets the first roll. He is a 15. He has C stuff. And for Bunning, 16. He has C stuff. So we may, we may have a slugfest on our hands today. All right, so Mr. Bunning will finish his warm-up tosses. And we will get this one going from Fenway Park in Boston. All right, here we go. Maury Wills leads off against Bunny. Oh, and I'm dropping dice already. Getting that out of the way early. Okay, it's a 25 on Will's card. That is an out uh, for Maury Wills. That's hit on the ground to Johnny Temple. He throws to Norm Cash, and there's one away in the top of the first. We are underway. Here's Henry Aaron facing Bunning. A 54. So we go to the 54 chart. And we roll, we look at the D20, base is empty, Wilder chart. Four bases empty, Wild S chart. 15 pop up, shallow right field. Caught by Norm Cash, collision. If a roll of D6, if it's a three, the first baseman's hurt. Uh, we're not going to do those. We're not going to do injuries, so it's an out. And there we go. Now it's Eddie Matthews. Fifty-three defense chart. And I got that right here. Yep, I sure do. Here it is. Uh, gonna re-roll. It is a range check. Get to the kitchen. Oh my God, I smell gas. 52. Third base, double into the left field corner. Unless he passes the range check. Uh, the range check for Brooks Robinson. He is a 13. And he's got that handled. To first for out number three. Robinson gloves it. Throws across the diamond to Norm Cash. And there... Side is retired. The Nash thing is done in the first. Bottom of the first coming. It'll be Cash, Calavito, and K-Line against Perky. 36 is a blank. 36 on Perky is a single one to six. It's a 12, so it's not a single. That would be an out. That's a pop-up. Maury Wills is calling and taking, and that is out number one. Calavito up. That hit to left and deep. Rocky got it. Going to the wall is Cepeda, but it's gone over the monster. Rocky Calavito gives the American League a one nothing lead, and now it's K-Line. 34 is a blank, 16. That's a base hit off Perky's card. It's a base hit for K-Line. One out, one on. Now it's Mantle. Perky with first inning trouble. 23. Hey, struck him out. And there's one gone. Two gone, sorry, excuse me, with K-Line still at first. Now it's Romano. 
54 chart, 54, chart 54, where are you? Here we go. Uh, we have a man on base. Wild pitcher pass ball, the original D20. I have no idea what that was. We're going to roll it again. Yeah, we'll use the four. If the D20 falls within the pitcher's wild pitch rating. Uh, wild pitch, it does. Perky's knuckleball gets by Roseboro. Uh, let's see what Roseboro's pass ball rating looks like. It's a one to three. It's not in there, so it's a wild pitch. Okay, so the wild pitch happens, and K-Line moves up to second base. Romano is still at the plate. The pitch from Perky is a 31. That's a blank. That's a base hit for Perky. And that is to left. It's a base hit to left. Now the left fielder, if he has a W, a weak arm, uh, that is going to score K-line. And the left fielder is Cepeda. He has an average arm in left field. Now they can run with risk. Hmm. They're going to hold him. Aparicio comes up with American Leaguers at the corners. That's K-Line at third, Romano at first. one nothing American League. Perky struggling to get out of the first. 32. 32 is an out. That is popped up. And that is in foul territory. John Roseboro throws away the mask and makes the catch for out number three. We've played one in game two. And it's one nothing American League. Here comes Mr. Bunning. Mays, Cepeda, and White coming up in the National League second inning. Pitch to Willie. Is ball four. Now I call the stolen bases, so we're not going anywhere yet. Cepeda up. Bunning checks Mays at first, and this is a base hit for Cepeda. Goes to right field, and drops in front of K-Line. He is not a weak arm, so Mays is going to stop at second, and there's two on with nobody out for White. Bunning the stretch and the delivery. That is an out. He would be a left-handed batter. Ground ball, first base, gloved by Cash. And he knocks it down, picks it up, staggers to first base, and does it unassisted as the runners move up. So Mays at third, Cepeda at second, with one out now for bowling. Frank bowling at the plate. 63 is a blank. 63 for Bunning is a strikeout. 1 to 16. We get a 15. Hey, struck him out. Two down in the second inning. Roseboro up with Perky in the on deck circle. They're going to pitch to Roseboro. Bunning, the pitch. 56. That's a blank. Hey, struck him out with two. 
strikeouts in a row to end the second inning. That's the old broccoli cauliflower medley. Yes. After one and a half, one nothing American Leaguers. Now it's Temple, Robinson, and Bunning in the American League second. Perky trying to right the ship after a shaky first. Ground ball, Maury Wills gloves it and throws to Bill White for out number one. Now it's Brooks Robinson. Could be, and it is, a walk. Ball four, Robinson takes his base. Again, I'm calling the steals, so the plus is ignored. And Bunning comes to the plate. Could see a bunt here. Hmm. Sacrifice hit five. Perky the stretch. And the pitch. He is squaring to bunt. He gets the bunt down. It is greater than the sacrifice hit rating, which is a five. So, oh, nope. Second roll is a six. It's popped up. Roll again. Nope. So, it's a pop-up bunt. And that goes to Roseboro. So Robinson will stay put. And there are two outs. Now it's Cash against Perky, 31. Look on Perky, that's a base hit. Base hit to left field. Uh, a fast runner is going to go two bases. I don't think Brooks is fast. He's average. So that's going to be a one base advance, first and second. Two outs for Calavito. Rocky Calavito homered in the first to give the American League the lead. The pitch, 42 is blank. 42 is an out. 15, ground ball. Yeah. Ground ball to Eddie Matthews. He gloves it and throws to Bill White to retire the American League in the second. So we've played two, and the American League has a one to nothing lead. A couple of C starters making it work so far in an All-Star Game series. Perky, Wills, and Aaron in the third inning for the National League. 23, hey, struck him out. Three strikeouts, last three guys in a row for Bunning, all on K's. Now it's Wills. 46, ballpark effect. We use Baltimore's ballpark card, even though I say that we're in Fenway, because I'm using this to remind me Paul Richards is the manager of the American League, and I will forget if I don't do that. And this is a double for Maury Wills. Around first, he's got himself a two-base hit, and he's in scoring position for Henry Aaron. Bunning in a third-inning jam. Get the stretch and the pitch to the hammer. Line out to short, caught by Aparicio, no double play. Two down, and now it's Matthews bunning the stretch, the pitch to Eddie. 54 chart, chart 54, where are you? Here we go. Men on base. Wild pitch or passed ball. Seven. It is a wild pitch. 
unless it's a pass ball. I don't think Romano, nope, he's a one to three. So it is a wild pitch that'll advance Wills to third. And now Matthews has a chance to drive in a run. 90 feet away with a tie score on his back, Mari Wills. The pitch from Bunning to Matthews is a 36. That's an out. Line shot caught by Aparicio. One more time, a pair of line outs to Louis. After two and a half, it's one nothing American League. Getting away with the C ratings. Getting away with not having their best stuff. K-Line, Mantle, Romano, 3-4-5 in Paul Richards' lineup. Chart 54, where are you? Nobody aboard. Strike three if the catcher range rating is G as he frames the pitch. Well, I have a feeling his range rating for John Roseboro is going to be pretty darn good. And I'm wrong again, as usual. <laughs> 16. Uh, he is an N. He's not at home, so no. That's ball four. So K-Line draws a leadoff walk because Roseboro's on the road. Now it's Mantle. 16, hey, struck him out. That's Perky's for second. Got Mickey both times. Romano one for one. K-line at first, one out. We're in the bottom of the third, and there's a drive. Center field and deep. This is going to go out of here, and it's a 3 nothing American League lead. That's right. John Romano just took Bob Perky over the triangle at Fenway Park, and it's 3 nothing American League with one out in the third. Aparicio at the plate. Base hit for Louie. Now it's Temple. Perky the stretch. There goes Louie. And the hit and run is on. Ground ball, gloved by White. He's going to take it unassisted for out number two. Aparicio advances to second on the hit and run, and now it's Brooks Robinson with two outs. And Bunning on deck. They're going to walk Brooks and go after Bunning. Two outs, two on. The pitch from Perky is a 16. Bunning lines it out to Maury Wills, and that's out number three. So the American League gets two runs and two hits and leaves two. After three, it's 3 nothing American League. For the National League, in the top of the fourth, it'll be Mays, Cepeda, and White. Chart 54. Holy cow. Where are you? Single to right field. For Mays, fielded by K-Line. Now we're going to check Al's error number to see if Mays takes off and goes for more. K-Line's error number is a four. He does not make an error, so Mays stops at first. Three-nothing American League. National League with a leadoff batter in the fourth aboard. Cepeda. Walk one to three, no. 
Ground ball hit to Aparicio. Got to check Louis's arm. He's average. He goes to Temple for one. The relay to Cash is in time for a rally-killing, soul-crushing 6-4-3 double play turned by the American League. Now it's White. 0 for 1. And Bill White gets into one. This is going to get into right center and deep. Rattle off the wall. Roll towards center. White around second. He's going to take third on a two-out triple for the National Leaguers. And bowling comes to the plate. Bunny isn't, isn't being masterful, but he is getting the job done. Let's see if bowling can get this in. And he draws a walk. National Leaguers at the corners with two outs in the fourth. Here's Roseboro bunning the stretch. On deck is Perky. Base hit, Roseboro against the right-handed bunning. It's three to one now. Let's see where bowling might be headed. If he's fast, he's going to third. He's fast, he's going to third. National Leaguers again at the corners. Three to one ball game. Here comes Perky. Ah, top of the fourth. Probably too early to hit for him. So we'll have him. Man, there's eight million pitchers on the team, though. That's the thing. You can get away with that. Ah. Well, Perky's got C stuff. I used the other pitchers. Oh boy. Time out. Couple things happening all at once here. Joey Jay is going to get up in the bullpen right away and start to throw. He's going to become the new National League pitcher for the fourth inning. Smokey Burgess is going to pinch hit for Perky and try and get at least one more run home. Pinch hitting for Perky with two outs in the fourth. Bunning the stretch and the delivery. And he's not going to come through. It's a ground ball to Norm Cash. He's going to flip to Bunning covering, and that will retire the National League in the fourth. But they get a run on three hits and leave two. So... That's it for Mr. Perky. It's going to be Joey J, the right-hander for the Reds. The, well, I don't know, kind of the ace of their staff in 61. 21. Could have go with Jim O'Toole, I guess, maybe. Uh, he will be the second pitcher. He was 21 and 10. Let's see what kind of stuff he's got coming out of the bullpen. He has A stuff. And he will face the top of the American League order. It's a 3-1 game in the bottom of the fourth. Pitch to Cash is a 35. That's a blank. It's going to be an out. Popped it up. Under it is third baseman Eddie Matthews. He's calling and taking for out number one. Here comes Calavito. 45. Blank. Out, 18, hit to center, but not deep. Under it is Willie Mays for out number two. And here's Al Kaline. One for one in the game so far. And... Hit to right. Under this one is 
Henry Aaron for out number three, and Joey J has a one, two, three, fourth inning. We go to the fifth. Three one American Leaguers. Top of the order for the American League now, or for the National League, against Bunning. American League might be thinking about getting some action going as well in their bullpen. They have a deeper pen. Uh, Jim Perry's going to start to throw the Cleveland Indians right-hander. And Wills will lead off the fifth. That's going to be hit to left on a line to Rocky Calavito for one out. Henry Aaron is 0 for 2. Uh, hit to center. Under this one is Mickey Mantle. And there's two gone. And Eddie Matthews 0 for 2. And it's a base hit for the lefty swinger Matthews to right field. Drops in front of K-line. Al throws it in to the infield. And Matthews sticks with a single. Here's Mays with two outs and Matthews at first. Bunning the stretch and the pitch. It's a comebacker. Gloved by Bunning. He takes a couple steps toward Cash and underhands him the ball. And that will retire the National League in the fifth. We're halfway through this one. And it is 3-1 American League. Joey J out for inning number two. He'll face Mantle, Romano, and Aparicio in the American League fifth. The 32. Uh, hit to left toward the line. Cepeda on the run. And look at Orlando get there for out number one. Romano's two for two, including a two-run bomb in the third. The pitch. Ground ball, Bill White. He's going to flip to Jay covering. And there's two down in the American League fifth. Here comes Aparicio. One for two for Louie. Got to do a defense check. This is an error check. And it's hit to bowling. His error number is a three. And Frank's going to make that play. So Joey J with a pair of one, two, three innings. We go to the sixth. Three, one, American League. In game two of this best of five series between the All-Stars of the 1961 season. Bunning will face Cepeda, White, and Bowling. His stamina, if you're wondering, and you probably are, it's a 32 he has faced 22 batters to this point. Pitch to Cepeda. Is drilled to left and deep. Back goes Calavito, and it's over the monster. Cepeda touches them all, and he cuts the lead to one. It's 3-2 American League now. And Jim Perry starts working again in the American League bullpen. White is one for two. The pitch to him. Uh, pa line out. Caught by Cash. Not getting cheated. Bowling up there now. 0 for 1. Ground ball to White. He's going to flip to Bunning. I'm sorry, ground ball to Cash. He's going to flip to Bunning covering, and there's two down. And now it's Roseboro, one for two. 
Hit to left, back toward the monster, back goes Calavito, and he makes the catch on the track. That retires the National League in the sixth, but they get one back on the bomb by Cepeda. After five and a half, it's 3-2 American League. Bottom third of the American League order now, Temple, Robinson, and the pitcher, Bunning. Ball four to Temple. Brooks Robinson coming up. Jay the stretch checks Temple at first. The pitch, Brooks squares to bunt. He bunts it to Joey J. J gloves it, throws to Bowling covering first, and Robinson is retired as Temple moves to second. Now it's Bunning, but he's going to be called back for a pinch hitter. Paul Richards wants another wants an insurance run, period, and he's looking down his bench to see who he might call on to deliver that insurance run, and it's going to be Jim Gentile. Left-handed batting first baseman for Baltimore is going to bat for Bunning in the sixth. Jim's numbers, six innings pitched, seven hits allowed. He walked two, and he struck out three. Allowed two runs, they're both earned, and one home run. He stands to win if the American League can hold the lead. For right now, there's one out, and Temple at second. Jay the stretch and the delivery. Ooh, and we got to do another defense check. This is an error check. Exotic error chart. And so here we go with that. It's the catcher exotic error. We have a runner at second base. Ball thrown down the first baseline by the pitcher or the catcher. By the catcher. So it's a dribbler. Gentile taps it out in front of the plate. Roseboro hops on it, fires to first, but it gets past White. So that's going to be an E2. Temple will score. It's 4-2 American League, and Gentile finds his way, remarkably enough, to second base despite, despite not having the best wheels in the league. So now it'll be Cash facing Jay. First base open. A little sloppy play by the National League. Cash one for three. The pitch to him. Hey, struck him out. There's two down. That's Jay's first strikeout. And it'll be Calavito at the plate with Gentile at second. Rockies, one for three, the pitch. Hey, struck him out. That's the second strikeout for Jay, and he picked a good time for it to restore some order in the sixth. But the American League scores a run on no hits, and they leave one. It's a 4-2 game going to the seventh inning. The new pitcher for the American League... We'll bat in the nine spot. It's going to be Jim Perry. He is a right-hander of the Cleveland Indians. Was 10-17 in the 1961 season. So it's Joey Jay's turn in the order, and he will not bat. We're in the seventh. They're down two.
George Altman is going to bat here for Jay of the Chicago Cubs. And he played a big role in yesterday's game, or in the game one of the series. Perry winds and deals to Altman. Hey, struck him out. One gone in the seventh. Will's coming to the plate. And we have another error check. Third base, exotic error. Base is empty. That's hit to Brooks Robinson. He throws it away. Uh, Wills. Uh-oh. So Wills is around second. The throw went down the right field line. K-Line's got to go get it in the corner. Look at Maury around second. He's heading for third. The throw from K-Line all the way on the line to Robinson is in time. Wowzers. Brooks Robinson applies the tag and Wills is retired 9-5. to five. Maury Wills taking a chance down two runs in the seventh inning and trying to get to third on the error by Robinson. And Al Kaline was having none of it. Yikes. Mercy. 0 for 3 for Aaron. Perry's pitch. Ground ball Robinson. One more try. This time he throws to Cash, and it's in time to retire Aaron. The Amer National League is done in the seventh. It's time to stretch him out at Fenway. It's a 4 2 American League lead. We have a new National League pitcher coming on. And timeout. Danny Murtaugh wants his short man, Roy Face, to come on here in the seventh. He'll face Kaline, Mantle, and Romano. Let's see what kind of stuff Roy's got today. And it's average stuff. He will bat in the nine spot. So Kaline, who made the big throw to eliminate Maury Wills on the bases in the top of the inning, leads off the bottom of the inning. One for two. And it's a base hit for K-Line. To left field. Drops in front of Orlando Cepeda. And there's a man on now in the seventh. Mantle 0 for three. The pitch from face. Ground ball. Maury Wills. He goes to bowling for one. The relay to White is in time for a 6-4-3 rally-killing, soul-crushing double play turned by the National League. Now it's Romano. Two for three. Hit by pitch? No. And a comebacker to face. He takes a couple steps toward White, and that will be it for the American League in the seventh. We go to the eighth. 4-2 American League. And another good one here. Evenly matched teams, as you might expect. Perry out for inning number two. Eddie Matthews, Willie Mays, Orlando Cepeda. Three, four, five hitters for the National League. The pitch to Matthews. Hit in the air to center high, but not deep enough. Under it is Mantle, and there's one down. Here's Mays. We're in the eighth. The pitch from Perry. Popped him up. Wouldn't be a home run in a phone booth.
Under it is Brooks Robinson, and he's going to make the catch for out number two. And here comes Orlando Cepeda, two for three with a dong in the sixth. Line shot right at Louis Aparicio, and that will retire the National League in the eighth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Face coming out for inning number two. He'll face Aparicio, Temple, and Robinson. Six, seven, eight hitters. Pitch to Louie. Combacker, gloved by face. He turns and throws to Bill White for out number one. Here's Temple for two. Line shot, this one right back through the box. Face gets his glove up in self-defense. There's two down, and now is Robinson. Jim Perry on deck. Comebacker one more time. This one on a hop. He grabs this one, throws to White. Roy Face getting a workout on the mound. It's a 1-2-3-8. We go to the ninth. It's 4-2 American League. Jim Perry out to finish the job. Working on a three-inning save if he can close the deal. Louis Arroyo throwing in the American League bullpen. White is one for three. And Danny Murtaugh is going to go to the bench. He wants Frank Robinson, and he's going to get him. Robbie comes off the bench to hit for Bill White in inning number nine. Bowling standing in the on-deck circle. Perry winds and delivers. And I still don't know what kind of stuff Jim Perry's got. We're going to keep the 10. He's got C stuff. Uh, 35 is a base hit for Robinson. And that's going to do it for Perry. We're going to see Louis Arroyo. Louis played a big part in yes in the game one of the series yesterday's game. Arroyo is on. He will bat in the nine spot. See what kind of stuff Louis got. He has average stuff. Bowling will be called back for a pinch hitter, and here comes Danny Murtaugh's own Roberto Clemente. To bat for Frank. Robinson on first. Here comes Clemente. No action in the American League bullpen. It's all up to a Royal. Pitch to Clemente. He lost him. That's ball four. Two on. Nobody out. The tying runs are aboard. Now it's Roseboro. Uh, well, may as well keep going to the bench. That seems to be working. Uh, but who, who, who? Or we could bunt. But they're going for the they're going for the lead here. So it's going to be Banks to pinch hit for Roseboro. Two on, nobody out. The runners are Frank Robinson at second base and Roberto Clemente at first base. Banks is is up. And in the on-deck circle, Dick Stewart, Dr. Strange Glove. Nineteen. Hit to right. K line under it. Nobody's moving anywhere. 
because they don't want to make a pointless out. And so there's one down. Robinson holds. Now it's Stewart to bat for face. Dick Stewart batting for Roy Face, Pirate for Pirate, 35 dongs on the season. Arroyo the stretch, checks Robinson at second, then he checks Clemente at first. The pitch home is trouble. This is going to get over everybody's head into the triangle. Running it down his mantle, scoring from second is Robinson. Coming all the way around from first is Clemente. Dick Stewart with a triple. And we are tied at four in the top of the ninth. Maury Wills coming to the plate. Nobody believes he's going to bat. Arroyo again having trouble. And now action starts in the bullpen. It's going to be Wilhelm. Will's being called back. We're going to see a hitter for him, and it's going to be Ken Boyer. Cardinal third baseman. Infield is in. American League trying not to gag up the lead. The pitch popped up. Just what Arroyo needs. Under it is Cash, and he's got it for out number two. Here comes Henry Aaron. First base open. They're walking him and going to Matthews. Matthews is one for four. Arroyo the stretch. The pitch to Eddie. Blank. And struck him out. We go to the bottom of the ninth. The National League has tied the game at four. On a single by Robinson, a walk to Clemente, and a triple by Dick Stewart. I said a triple by Dick Stewart. Mercy. So Banks will go in and play short in the bottom of the ninth. Boy, we need to do some bookkeeping here. Time Resetting the National League defense for you. A lot of changes. New catchers, Ed Bailey of the Giants. First baseman, Cepeda, moves from left field to first. Second base will be Eddie Casco. Shortstop, Ernie Banks. Third base, Ken Boyer. Left field will be uh, Frank Robinson. Center field, Willie Mays. Right field, Roberto Clemente. New pitchers, Don Drysdale for the National League. And we are headed to extra innings unless the American League can do something here and score themselves a run. Any old kind of a run is going to win it. The National League pitcher is Don Drysdale. His stuff is average. And he will face Louis Arroyo, who has already been called back for a pinch hitter. Then Norm Cash, then Rocky Calavito, unless there are changes. And Roger Maris is coming off the bench to lead off the ninth inning for the American League against Drysdale. 4-4 game, bottom of the ninth. Here we go. Ground ball to Eddie Casco. He flips to Cepeda at first, and there's one gone. Now it's Cash. Eddie 
And Norm hits a comeback or gloved by Drysdale. There's two down. And Calavito, who homered in the first, certainly has the juice to get one over the monster. Hey, struck him out, and that's going to send us to extra innings. We're going to have an extra inning ball game in game two. 4-4 four, four game. American League needs a new pitcher, and that's going to be Hoyt Wilhelm, the old knuckleballer. Maris will not. Yes, he will. Let's see how we want to do this here. Maris will... Calavito's coming out. Maris will go out to play right field. K-Line will shift to left field. Wilhelm will bat in the two spot in the batting order. We're going to the 10th. For the Nationals, it'll be Mays, Cepeda, and Robinson. Righty, righty, righty against Wilhelm in the 10th. It's a 4-4 ball game. Game two, best of five. The pitch to, Will to Willie Mays. Nope. Got to keep the 18. Let's remember that. And Wilhelm has C stuff. To 32, it's going to be an out. We have an 18. And it's hit to center, but not deep. Mantle there, and there's one down. Cepeda, the plate. Nothing there. Base hit off of Wilhelm. Single for Orlando. He's on with his third hit of the day. Here's Robinson. Action begins in the American League bullpen one more time. It's Mike Frenellis. Robinson, single last inning, scored last inning. The pitch to Robbie is hit on the ground. To Brooks Robinson. He goes to Temple for one. The relay to Cash is in time for rally killing, soul crushing. 5 4 3 double play turned by the American League. And we go to the bottom of the 10th. Drysdale, inning number two. It's K Line, Mantle, and Romano for the American League, unless we make some changes. K Line is two for three. He bats the pitch. Fly ball, center field. Willie Mays has to run away, but he's going to get there, and there's one gone. Now it's Mantle. Mickey's cold, 0 for 4. And I'm still dropping dice. You believe that? Drysdale winds and delivers to Mantle. And that's a base hit for the Mick. Base hit for Mantle. The winning run is aboard with one out. Romano is due and being called back. Paul Richards wants to use one of his hairy-chested sluggers, and it's going to be Harmon Killebrew. Killebrew for Romano. Aparicio on deck. But Elston Howard has moved to the on-deck circle. To bat for Louie. Drysdale the stretch. The pitch. Hey, strikes out Killebrew. Drysdale's second strikeout. And now it's Howard. Mantle still at first with two outs in the tenth. Drysdale the stretch, the pitch to Howard is popped up. Under it is Boyer. He takes it for out number three. We're going 11. Need a new shortstop. 
need a couple of things. Actually, Howard's going to go in and catch. And the new shortstop will be Tony Kubek. And he will bat fifth. Wilhelm will face Clemente, Banks, and Casco in the National League 11th inning. Second inning of work for Hoyt. Pitch for him is a base hit for Wilhelm, for Clemente. Lead run aboard. Banks coming up, and he's not a bunter. Ah. Richard sticking with Wilhelm. Banks at the plate. Banks not bunting the pitch. Ground ball, Brooks Robinson. Brooks fires to Temple for one. The relay to Cash is in time for a rally-killing, soul-crushing 6-4-3 job. And there's two outs in the National League 11th. That'll bring up Casco. Wilhelm gets into trouble. Wilhelm gets out of trouble. The pitch to Eddie. Base hit for Casco. The red shortstop singles, and now it'll be Boyer. With two outs in the 11th. Wilhelm the stretch and the delivery. Error check. Fifty-two ground ball Brooks Robinson. And he boots it. It's uh, going to be a one base error on Brooks Robinson. Casco moves up to second. Boyer is safe at first. And Ed Bailey comes to the plate with a chance to be a hero. Two on, two outs. Drysdale standing on deck. The National League quickly... Getting action in their bullpen. It's going to be Miller and McCormick, a couple of giants. Lefty righty double barreled action, just the way I like it. Bailey, the Giants catcher. It's all up to the Giants here. Two on, two out. Wilhelm the stretch and the delivery. Base hit, Wilhelm. Right back through the box. Casco is being waved home. Here comes Mantle's throw. It's not in time. Bailey singles home. Casco, it's 5-4 National League. Boyer goes to third. National Leaguers at the corners. And here comes Drysdale because he will bat. Drysdale will bat for himself. And here comes Paul Richards. He wants Fornellis from the Red Sox. So that's it for Wilhelm. After an inning and two thirds, almost got off the hook, but couldn't quite do it. Fornellis on nine and eight with 15 saves and 61. For the Red Sox, Boyer's at third, Bailey's at first. There's two outs, but the big thing, the National League has scored a run. It's 5-4. They lead in the 11th. 
The pitch to the big twin D. Ground ball, Temple. He's going to go the short way, flip to Kubek, covering, and that will retire the National League in the 11th. But they take the lead on a single by Ed Bailey. And now it's up to Drysdale to shut down the American League attack. It'll be Temple, Brooks Robinson, and then Maris. Seven, eight, nine hitters. Paul Richards looking at his bench saying, help me please. Tito Francona will bat for Temple. Indian for Indian. Brooks Robinson on deck. Drysdale winds and delivers to Francona. Base hit for Tito. Tying run aboard. He's fast. And Robinson comes to the plate with a chance to move him along. Paul Richards would settle for a tie at this point. Drysdale the stretch. And the delivery. Robinson squares to bunt. He gets it down. Gloved by Boyer, who fires to Casco, covering. And Robinson works the sacrifice bunt. Maris up. First base open. One out. Bottom of the 11th. Cash on deck. It's going to be tough. Rogers 0 for 1 in this one. Drysdale to stretch. The pitch to him is going to be trouble. This is a base hit for... Yeah, it's a base hit for Maris. Now they could send Francona, but they don't want to get shot down with... Make the second out of the inning, so he's going to stop at third. Maris stops with a single. There are American leaguers at the corners and Cash is at the plate. And all Norm did in 61 is hit 361. <clears throat> McCormick and Miller throwing quickly in the bullpen and Murtaugh wants McCormick, the left-hander. Drysdale's evening is complete. McCormick is on to face Cash. On deck is Fresnelis, but he, of course, will not bat. There's one out. There's men at first and third. Stu Miller continues to throw in the National League bullpen. Francona at third, Maris at first, one out, bottom of the 11th, and the American League needs a run to tie it, and two to walk it off. McCormick the stretch, the pitch to cash, the infield is in. Nothing there. We don't know what McCormick's stuff is like. It's A stuff. Roll to 16. It's an out. There's an F here. That means it's going to be a fly out to left field. Tagging is Francona. He will score. On the sacrifice fly by Norm Cash, we're tied at five. Fresnelis Dewey's not going to bat. Jackie Brandt, an outfielder for Paul Richards, Baltimore Orioles, will pinch hit here in the 11th. Maris still at first, two outs, and McCormick will face him. Base hit Brandt. This goes to center field. Mays gets it back in in a hurry. Maris stops at second, two on. 
two out, and McCormick will now face Kaline. A winning run at second base, but two outs, bottom of the 11th, we're tied at five. Great game, great series, great game. McCormick, the stretch, the pitch to Kaline. Nothing. He walked him. The bases are juiced. The bases are dripping with American Leaguers and Mickey Mantle's coming to the plate. Yikes. Could go to Miller here, but Miller's wild too. So, they're sticking with McCormick. On deck is Kubek, but Kubek's not going to matter. It's two outs, bottom of the 11th. Mantle is it. Mantle is the ball game. He's one for five. 5-5 five, five game, Maris at third, Brandt at second, K-Line at first, and Mantle at the plate. We're either going to the 12th or we're going home. McCormick, the stretch, the pitch for the Mick. It's not a strikeout, hit to right, under it is... Clemente, and he makes the catch. McCormick gets off the hook, but the American League scores a run to tie it. We're going 12. It's a 5-5 game, and I've got to do some accounting. Uh, let's see what we got here. All right, time up. Lineups are squared away for inning number 12. American League defense going to the top of the 12th. Has Howard behind the plate. Cash at first. Nellie Fox at second. Kubek at short. And Brooks Robin. I'm sorry. And Brooks Robinson at third. K-Line is in left. Jackie Brandt is in center. Roger Maris is in right. And on the mound, Dick Donovan. Uh, maybe... Salad days with the White Sox, but here he's with the Senators in 61. He will face Mays, Cepeda, and Frank Robinson in the top of the 12th. Ready, ready, ready. Donovan 10-10 ten and 10 for a bad Senators team in their expansion year in 61. Pitch to Willie. Of 46. That's a ballpark check. And we'll use the 13. And it is a pop out to cash at first. And there's one down. All right. Cepeda coming up now. Uh, Donovan is an A pitcher. He's got his stuff today. And that is grounded to cash. He's going to flip to Donovan covering, and there's two outs in the 12th. Frank Robinson, two outs, nobody aboard for the National Leaguers. Ballpark check is a 20. That's popped up. Oh, nope, I'm wrong about that. We're going to the 54 chart. Chart 54, where are you? Chart 54, where are you? Time up. We're on the wildest chart, because why wouldn't we be? It's a pop-up. Third base, Brooks Robinson, fan interference. If the away team is fielding the ball, he's not. No interference if hometown field, home team fielding. The home team is fielding. So Robinson gets another chance to hit Donovan. 64 is a blank. 64 is an out. That's hit to center. Under it is Jackie Brandt. And it's a 1-2-3 12th inning for the National League against Dick Donovan of the Senators. Bottom of the 12th coming. Mike McCormick of the Giants still pitching. He will face Kubek, Howard, and Nellie Fox. Lefty, righty, lefty. 
pitch to Kubek is an error check on chart 51. It's a 54, grounder to Boyer, and it's a one, which is not a good thing. Going to be a one base error as Kenny throws it in the dirt and Cepeda cannot dig it out. So Kubek is aboard. He is the winning run in this ball game. 5-5 five, five game, bottom of the 12th. Elston Howard at the plate. Could have him bunt, but he's not a good bunter. Oh, wait, he's a three. He's an average bunter. But he hit 348. He's not bunting. McCormick, the stretch, and the pitch to Howard. He is a left-handed batter. That is a base hit. And Kubek is going to, to right field. It drops in front of Clemente. Kubek around second. He's heading to third. Clemente's throw to Boyer is late. It's first and third with nobody out in the bottom of the 12th for the American League. They scored a run to come back in the bottom of the 11th. Are they going to score a run in the bottom of the 12th to walk it off? Finelli Fox coming to the plate. One of the great bunters in history. Hmm. Nobody out. McCormick, the stretch, checks the runners. The infield is in, of course. So is the outfield, the pitch. He's not bunting. Eighteen. He hits it to center field. Under it is Mays. Tagging at third is Kubek. Mays has a strong arm, as you might guess. <sighs> so now... His outfield rating is an S2, but Kubek is fast, so we subtract one. So anything but a one, as Kubek tags, anything but a one, he's going to be safe. So Mays makes the catch in center field. Kubek tags. Howard holds at first. The throw home from Willie is not in time, and the sacrifice fly is caught by Mays. Kubek scores from third, and the American League walks off a 6-5 extra inning victory in 12 innings. Let's give you the line scores and the totals uh, for the victorious homestanding American League. Six runs. Twelve hits. And they committed... Uh, one error. Winning pitcher will be Donovan. Uh, losing pitcher will be McCormick. The National League's line score uh, totals five runs, 13 hits for the National League, and... They committed two errors, and the costly one, of course, was Boyers. Well, they had a couple of costly errors, actually. They both led to runs. All right, so that concludes Game 2 using Fall Classic Baseball. It's a best of five for Game 3. I'll go over the first two games in detail. Don't want to just spoil anything. If you haven't checked out Game 1, do that. Amazing game for game one. It's an amazing series. Um, so check it out. Have a wonderful day. So long, everybody.